let us begin with the next topic which is mass transfer in bioreactors. Now, mass is transferred we know under the influence of a concentration gradient in a system where the driving force is the concentration gradient. The gas liquid mass transfer this is extremely important in bioprocessing. In aerobic processes oxygen must first be transferred from gas bulk through a series of steps on to the surface of cells. The solubility of oxygen within the broth is very poor. Generally these broths are aqueous systems and oxygen solubility in aqueous systems is poor. Enhancement of gas liquid mass transfer therefore becomes the crucial step especially in aerobic fermentations. Now, we need to first understand how does oxygen get dissolved in the bulk liquid in a fermenter. Now, before we understand that let us do a brush up with the phenomena of molecular diffusion. We all know that molecular diffusion involves movement of molecules under the influence of a concentration difference in the system. Diffusion occurs in the direction to destroy this concentration gradient. So, for a continuous diffusion to happen supplying material to the region of high concentration and removing it from the region of low concentration can keep the diffusion process continuous. This continuous diffusion is a what which is exploited for mass transfer operations in bioreaction systems. So, in order to quantify mass transfer rates we will apply fixed laws of diffusion. We all know what is fixed law of diffusion as shown on the slide this is the mass flux and which is related to the concentration gradient where the coefficient of relationship is your diffusivity. So, J A stands for the diffusive flux, D is for your diffusivity and D C A by D Y is your concentration gradient. Now, let us see what is the role of diffusion in bioprocessing. First is mixing. So, turbulence in fluids produces bulk mixing to maximum up to the smallest eddy formation. Within this smallest eddy the flow is largely we can assume streamline. So, that further mixing occurs only by diffusion of the fluid components. Now, mixing on a molecular scale therefore, completely relies on diffusion as the final step in the mixing process. Now, let us understand the mass transfer across the phase boundary because oxygen for example, is being transferred from the gas bubbles to the liquid broth and then to the cells. So, mass transfer between phases occurs in bioprocesses at various steps. Let us take some examples like for example, oxygen I said earlier is transferred from gas bubble to the fermentation broth. The second product recovery again mass transfer is involved from aqueous to organic liquid in case of solvent extractions. Then nutrient transfer from liquid medium to the cells which are in the form of pellet. So, which means from the outer layer to the inner most cell. Now, fluid velocities near the phase interface they are significantly decreased because of the boundary layer. Now, diffusion becomes therefore, very crucial for mass transfer across these phases or interface. Here to explain this mass transfer across the interface there are various theories. We will be focusing here on the two film theory where the entire resistance to transfer is assumed to be contained in the two fictitious films on either side of the phase interface in which the transfer will occur 
only by molecular diffusion and this resistance is said to be related to the diffusivity and the film thickness as shown here. So, your resistance which is 1 by k L is related to k L is your mass transfer coefficient is related to your diffusivity and the thickness of that film. Penetration theory is another theory which assumes that there are turbulent eddies which travel from the bulk to the phase to the interface where they remain for a constant exposure time T. Now, the solute is assumed to penetrate into the eddy during its stay at the interface by diffusion. So, it states that your mass transfer coefficient is related to the diffusivity and the time for which these small eddies stay at the interface. So, as I said earlier, we will assume two film theory to explain the mass transfer in the gas liquid interface. So, to generalize the rate of mass transfer we know is directly proportional to the driving force for the transfer and in this case the driving force is the concentration difference. So, it is directly proportional to the driving force and also to the area which is available for the transfer to happen. So, your mass transfer rate as given here in the first line is proportional to the transfer area and the transfer rate is again proportional to the driving force which is concentration difference here. So, your mass transfer rate it is called as mass transfer proportionality coefficient which we call it as mass transfer coefficient, your surface area for transfer and your concentration gradient across the interface. Now, the proportionality constant as I said is called the mass transfer coefficient. So, now k here it reflects the contribution to mass transfer of all the processes in the system that are affecting this boundary layer. The k therefore depends on the combined effects of flow velocity, geometry of the equipment, fluid properties like for example, viscosity and diffusivity. Now again k is measured experimentally or can also be estimated using correlations, empirical correlations available in literature. In general what is observed is that as we reduce the thickness of the boundary layer or if we improve the diffusion coefficient in the film, it will result in the enhancement of the mass transfer coefficient. So, the mass transfer coefficient by two film theory if you remember was directly proportional to the diffusivity and inversely proportional to the film thickness and once the k is improved your mass transfer rate is also improved. So, now let us derive some expressions to explain the gas liquid mass transfer. So, the rate of mass transfer of component A. So, if you see the schematic here let us see the diagram where A is your entity which is transferring from the gas phase to the liquid phase. So, C A G stands for the concentration of that component A in the gas phase, bulk of the gas phase. Then as it crosses the boundary layer, the gas film. So, there are two fictitious films across the interface. This is the phase boundary which I am showing with a red color arrow. So, your C A G it drops to the some equilibrium value which we call it as CAGI and then again further travelling across facing the resistance CAL is the 
concentration of A in the bulk of the liquid after getting transferred. So, the rate of mass transfer of component A through the boundary layer, the gas boundary layer which is written as gas film here in the diagram can be given as equation 1. So, kg stands for the mass transfer coefficient of the gas film, CAG is your component A concentration in the gas bulk and CAGI is the component A concentration at the interface and capital A is the surface area. So, now equation 1 demonstrates the rate of mass transfer of component A across the gas film. Now, we will assume that steady state prevails at the boundary at the interface. So, no accumulation of A is happening which would mean that the rate at which the A is getting transferred through this gas film should be equal to the rate at which the A is further getting transferred through the liquid film to the liquid bulk. So, for the rate of mass transfer of component A through the liquid boundary layer, we can use the expression given in equation 2. So, similar to equation 1, your equation 2 stands for the rate of mass transfer through the liquid boundary layer, where C A L I is the concentration of component A in liquid at the interface, C A L is the concentration of component A in the liquid bulk. Now, because no accumulation is happening, so we assume equilibrium is existing at the interface. Then we assume that equilibrium is existing which means that at the interface C A G I which is the concentration in gas is related to C A L I which is the concentration of component A in liquid at the interface by a constant m. They are linearly related. So, if you remember this law is Henry's law. Now, equilibrium concentration in the gas phase is a linear function of the that in the liquid phase or liquid concentration. So, as I said this is the linear relationship of the equilibrium concentrations. Now, we are assuming steady state prevails. So, therefore, no accumulation of component A at the interface. So, this means that component A is transported through phase 1 which is the gas phase here must be transported through phase 2. So, the rate of transfer of through the gas here shown in a 4 is equal to the rate of transfer from the liquid both should be equal. So, have been designated N A. So, G and L have been removed as both are equal. So, the idea now is in order to find an expression for this mass transfer of component A, mass transfer rate of component A through the interface, it is very difficult to measure the concentration values be it in gas or liquid at the phase boundary. So, we would like to remove the non-measurable quantities from these equations and derive an expression for the mass transfer across this boundary layer or across this film. So, if you multiply equation 2 here which explains the rate of mass transfer of component A through the liquid boundary layer, if you multiply this by m. So, if we multiply this by m, so m into C A L I we know is can be replaced as C A G I and so m into C A L I. So, we will multiply this entire equation by m and if we then add after multiplication the equation 1 
and this is now can be written as N A. Then and if we bring all the constants together and the variables on one side, we end up in this equation. So, once we divide the entire equation after addition by m, we end up here. Let us call this as first equation and this one as second. All terms in the bracket in equation 2, they are all constants. So, let us replace this as the overall resistance and the liquid phase mass transfer coefficient by capital K subscript L. So, now if you see the right hand side is a function of the gas phase component A concentration, bulk gas phase concentration and the bulk liquid phase concentration of component A. And in the LHS, this entire constant is replaced by a constant 1 by KL and A has been kept brought out and kept common. So, this we can call it as overall resistance like if you remember KL times A into concentration difference was your rate of mass transfer. So, similarly, here we and this is called resistance KLA. So, here this entire thing has been replaced as capital KL A. So, this is overall resistance. So, then your NA the mass transfer rate of A can be given as KLA times CAL star minus CAL. Now, CAL star is nothing but the equilibrium concentration of the component A in gas with, with the liquid governed by the Henry's constant M. So, this has been replaced as a liquid phase corresponding liquid phase concentration which is an equilibrium with the CAG gas bulk concentration. So, this is your saturation concentration of component A in liquid and CL is your bulk liquid concentration of component A and KL is called as the overall mass transfer coefficient. So, for component A which is sparingly soluble in liquid like for example, in oxygen of uh, in case of oxygen, then your liquid mass transfer resistance, liquid phase mass transfer resistance dominates which is 1 by small KLA and your 1 by KGA which is the gas phase mass transfer resistance is very less in comparison to KLA. Now, because 1 by KGA is very less which is the resistance of the gas phase. So, your KGA value is very very high than KLA. So, this is neglected and your capital KLA can be replaced as small KLA in this. So, this equation holds true for sparingly soluble components in the fermentation system. So, that was, so this is how we can define the oxygen transfer rate.